Well, the Angels used up all of their goodwill that they built up last week and get swept by the Marlins this weekend. So what went wrong and what happens next? It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and now on Sirius XM by searching Lockdown Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. And the same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with the eBay Guarantee Fit, ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guarantee Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fridge Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, you and I have been fans of this team for years. It's our second season here at Lockdown Angels, and so we're happy to talk Angels baseball Monday through Friday here on Lockdown Angels. Hey, Lockdown Everydayers, those of you who join us every single day, join us each day this week as we recap the next series against the Chicago White Sox. They're headed to the south side of Chicago, Mike, so we'll see them out there. On today's show, we're recapping the weekend series against the Marlins. A very disappointing weekend as the Angels were swept, and there were issues that seemed to plague this team in each game. So we're going to take each game segment by segment. Let's start with Friday's game, Mike, in segment one. All right, so the Angels lose on Friday 6-2, to two, and I'm a huge Reed Detmers fan. Johnny, you know that. Listeners mm-hmm. and viewers know that. And he started this game, but it just feels like he's regressed a bit, especially from his last start. There, was a mm. lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of swings and misses. There was a lot of contact. And he struggled the third time through the order, which has been the issue for Reed this year and even last year. Five innings pitched, 10 hits, John, which mm. a lot of contact against him. Three walks, three runs. 5Ks, now he's been striking out a lot of guys, but this time he doesn't. What really was the issue for him and throwing a lot of pitches was that people were getting hits off of him. And Mm -hmm. he left in the sixth inning without getting an out. And then Jacob Webb comes in, John. And I was really impressed with Webb in this moment. Bases Mm -hmm. loaded, nobody out. And he gets out of the inning. He gets two ground balls and he strikes a guy out. Now, I know in the next inning, he did give up a two-run home run, but he he did look good, and he is kind of working his way, feeling his way through what his role is in this bullpen. Johnny, I guess the question I would have for you is, is Webb who we want in this bullpen? Do you think he's a guy that can really contribute over the next few weeks and months? I don't think we have a choice at this point. I mean, <laughs> there's, so many, there's so many injuries up and down this roster, Mike, especially in the bullpen. Look, you've already got Quijada on the IL. You've got Austin Warren on the IL. Yep. You've lost Ryan Tapera. You've DFA'd him, right? You've got some guys on the 40-man like Jose Marte, Chris Rodriguez, who doesn't have a timeline. There's just a ton of guys that are on this 40-man roster who would be up instead. But Jacob Webb is somebody who's got you know major league experience, albeit it's not a lot, but right. it's somebody who's been there before. Right. And they're using these guys that they have. That's why you see so many of these young guys being called up to help out and reinforce this bullpen. Yes, they're great options and we're excited to see them, but they're not exactly the first ones on the list that we'd be calling up in this situation, especially because they're not on the 40 man. You think about obviously Ben Joyce. We'll talk about that later on. But there is a lot of options that the Angels could have and should have, but don't either because of injury or because they flat out got tired of to parable uh, t- Ryan yeah. to para being to parable, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I screwed that one up, but all of that to say, no, we got you. <laughs> they've, they've, they've gone through all of their options at this yeah. point. And so yeah. that's why you have to roll with somebody like Webb. and look, he came in and did a great job. And then he went out there for another inning. And that was an issue all weekend long. Mike was Phil Nevin trying to stretch these guys to more than one inning. And I completely disagree with that i understand Mm. that he probably felt like he was up a creek without a paddle in this weekend series in terms of the bullpen but man it was so frustrating to see him make some of the decisions that he's made you and i have been soft on phil nevin because of course we found out that 
Harry Manassian was kind of pulling the strings in the first month of the season and Phil Nevin wasn't really making his own decisions. He was being told what to do. And then since he's had a little bit more free reign, we've seen some better decision making, yeah. but we've still seen a lot of head scratchers and frustrating decisions. And this weekend I think was full of them. Now, as I talk about the young guys who are coming up, Sam Bachman made his MLB debut, Mike, and yeah. he was certainly somebody who's highly anticipated. Of course, we drafted him as a starter, and he's going to be pitching out of the bullpen kind of in the same way Chase Silseth has been doing. I know they gave Silseth a start uh, this past uh, week or two ago, and he also started last season. But I think they're giving these guys some really interesting choices, uh, or I should say they're giving these guys some really interesting moments to pitch in. And so here's what Sam Bachman did. He struck out the first batter. He gave up a single to the second batter. He walked the next batter. He got a strikeout on the next batter, which was Jorge Soler, yeah, a hit huge. and an RBI to Luis Arise. Of course, Arise is going to get a hit that because his batting average man. is like a thousand right now. Yeah. And he K's the last batter and he was sitting about 86 to 98 miles per hour on his pitches, on his repertoire, 13 balls, 13 strikes, First innings pitched. And I thought, hey, you know what? You took on Jorge Soler, who is crushing it and has been hitting tons of home runs. Uh, you got through Luis Arise. Yes, you gave up the hit in the RBI, but you put Sam Bachman in a tough position and he got through it. And then he comes in for a second inning, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What are we doing here? <laughs> that second inning, he did get a double play behind him, turned, which was great. Did give up a hit, a walk, and he striked out. He struck out a guy. Johnny, it feels like Phil Nevin is playing a game of cards and he's pretending he has a full house when he only has like a pair of twos, you know, and, <laughs> and I don't know how to play. I don't know if that's any better than a full house, but I'm assuming that it is. But what, yes, my point right. is this, my point is this, that he wants these guys to go two innings. And you and I have talked often about this bullpen needing guys that can go two innings, needing guys that can actually put in that, that time. But Phil doesn't have those guys. And all of the rules that he has with the metrics, and we're not sure exactly what is actually required of him right now and mm -hmm. what's not, but the rules seem to work against the guys that they have, and the rules seem to work against what Phil wants to actually do. It just it feels like we are pretending we're a completely different team, but we're still pulling from the bullpen of the Angels. Does that make sense? It just feels oh, like yeah. we're, we're not using our guys in the most appropriate way and, and Phil making these decisions, it looks good at first, but then as you pointed out, having Bachman go out there for a second inning or having Silseth go out there for a second inning, like these guys aren't designed for that. We hope that they can actually get there, but sure. I wonder if the metrics are having an impact on that. I'm wondering if some of the directives from the front office, and quite frankly, I wonder if Phil is just trying to stretch these guys into two inning guys when in reality, that's not who they are. It's who we need, but it's not who we are. Absolutely. Mike, I said something, and, and this is more to do with Saturday's game that we're going to talk about in the next segment. But I said on Twitter, it's one of those games that is on Phil Nevin. You have, you have the lead and you have to do everything you can to keep it. And this is yeah. Saturday. Yeah. You got to go Davinsky more Estevez in the seventh, eighth and ninth. And you got to win a game first before you give high leverage spots to the kids. Now I know Friday wasn't high leverage for Sam Bachman. The angels obviously were down in this one and right. they gave him the chance to go out there and get multiple innings. So I understand him trying to eat innings up. And obviously Bachman has been a starter down in the minor. So he has the ability to go multiple innings, but in the second inning, he pitched. He had a double play behind him, a hit, a walk, and a strikeout. So he got through it again, but we don't have those pieces, like you said. He's playing He's playing with, like I love how you said, a pair of twos. He's trying to bluff everybody. Yeah. Now, before we get to Saturday night's game, I do have to say that Gio Rochella has been on fire this weekend. He, he went three for yep. four on Friday night. Trout had an RBI single. Brandon Drury got his eighth home run, but the Angels came up short in this one. But we got to put this series behind us. Obviously, we're going to talk about games two and three and what happened there. But just to let everyone know, the Angels are playing the White Sox today at 510 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. And coming up on Locked on Angels, I made that comment about going from Estevez to Moore to, uh, or I should say, I made that comment 
about going from Davinsky to Moore to Estevez on Saturday night, but we didn't find out till after that Moore was hurt. So right. are we nervous about this bullpen with Matt Moore being out for what might be a month or more? We're going to talk about that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. Built, you got to try this. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. And what makes Built Bars so good? They're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been telling you you to order from built.com but now you can actually get your built bars from the local walmart or sam's club while they all have those specialty flavors at built.com so head to your nearest walmart today walk up to the pharmacy section and you can grab yourself a box of built bars they have a four bar box there cookies and cream double chocolate bar coconut puff all the good ones are there and if you're close to a sam's club you can run in and get a 13 bar box with our all their hit flavors uh, brownie batter and uh, brownie batter puff and churro puff. They're all delicious. You can thank me later. Built Bars and Built Puffs, you got to try this. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget that you can join us every day this week as we recap the series against the White Sox. Hey, we're trying to get above 15 wins in the month of May, and we've only got three games to do that before the end of the month. So catch this start of the road series against Chicago at 5, 10 p.m. Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Well, Friday was a loss, and so Saturday we actually were hopeful with Shohei Otani on the mound that perhaps the Angels would be really competitive in this game and maybe get a win and actually tie the series. And unfortunately for the Angels, it didn't actually land in Shohei's hands. It was later on in the innings where everything kind of fell apart. They lose <laughs> where it didn't land and it didn't land in Moniac's hands is what no, happened. <laughs> it didn't. And, and there you go. That's what happened really was the defense kind of fell apart in that 10th inning. Moniac drops a fly ball in left field and it causes a run to score. But John, here's the thing. It was five to four and the next batter, the angels get a tailor made double play. Oh. And so it was Thais at home and then throwing it down to first base out of the inning five to four. We can get that run back. We got the ghost runner. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Right. And then the Marlins challenge it and come to find out Thais was just really quick with his footwork and he didn't touch home plate. And, and usually they give you that kind of like in the area sort of move at second base, but they do not give you that at home plate. And so Thais misses it. And then we're in this position now where we got to have another out. We got to get another out, right? And and then that's when everything just kind of falls apart. Jaime Berea comes in. By the way, none of the runs charged to Jaime were, were earned runs. So his ERA yeah. actually didn't change at all. All of the four runs that the Marlins scored in the 10th inning were uh, unearned runs. And here's the really unfortunate news. That bottom of the inning, the Angels got the fifth run. Right. So they would have tied the game and it would have gone into – 11 innings if they right. didn't actually get the run in that that inning, a sixth run, right? And so this is just uh, kind of indicative of what the Angels have done all year. They have been this team that has been leading the league in unearned runs. They've led the league in errors, and they're they're not getting the outs that they need to get. No. And and Mickey Moniak's catch was a very catchable catch uh, it was a it was a long run but it was one of those moments where you're like you gotta you gotta haul that in homie you gotta mm -hmm. haul that in and then mm -hmm. the double play the angels pitchers are getting out and yeah. then the defense is just failing them and we had about a week and a half where this didn't happen and then that bugaboo came back and, and it <laughs> bit us on saturday didn't it absolutely and mike here's the thing you you mentioned matt Thice's footwork being fast he was still in the crouch position because it was a comebacker on the ground, obviously, to Jaime Berea. And Jaime, with a heads-up play, threw it to home. And yep. Thice threw it to first. And he's not on the plate. Like, yeah. oh, my gosh. It's just yeah. the worst thing I've ever seen. Can I tell you a funny story? I was Please. watching the game, and I was getting ready to put the dog to bed. I take him outside to do his business. It usually takes a while. I come back in, and I see it's 
eight to four. What yeah. the heck happened? And so yeah. I had to click back on the player to see what in the world happened. And I found out the unfortunate truth. And you're right. They were able to come back and get that run in the bottom of the 10th. And it would have tied at five, five and the game would not have gotten out of hand the way that it did. And here's something else that we need to consider. Mike Otani pitched really well in this yep. one. He I did. mean, he labored through it and he got through six innings pitched and he only gave up two runs on six hits and had 10 strikeouts. Right. And then offensively, the angels had a lot of chances to score and didn't come through. And I saw a lot of people criticizing Otani about like, well, he's got to get out of this slump and da, 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 da. And here's what I noticed, Mike, when he took a walk after he was done pitching, you know what he did? He stole second base. Yeah. So even though Otani is slumping at the plate, he's still creating havoc. He kept the angels in this game with a two run or surrendering two runs only through six innings. And that's when I tweeted out, you've got to go to Davinsky more and Estevez. Now I didn't know that more was injured. We had yeah. no news of that beforehand. And you know no why? At all. Because the, because they don't, the doctors don't talk to the media. Sam yeah. Blum just had an article put out and once again reiterated that the new policy is that none of the coaching staff, the hitting staff, the medical staff are allowed to talk to the media. And oh, this you is, have a policy. <laughs> the delegate oh, genius a has policy. a policy. <laughs> it's state run media, like we always yeah. say. Yeah. But, and and so I I understand people were frustrated, but I have to reiterate that Otani kept the Angels in the game. Yes. His bat wasn't working the way it was, but when he was done pitching, he was still trying to create havoc by stealing second base and putting himself in scoring position. But it comes down to the rest of the guys too. And they had tons of chances to score and didn't come through. Gio yeah. Rochella had a home run, which tied the game up in the eighth. And Matt Moore is on the IL with an oblique injury. And so we found out uh, Saturday night, late Saturday night, that they were going to put him on the IL. And Ben Joyce is coming up. And the oblique injury is a grade two strain. And we saw some information, a grade one strain takes about a month to heal. So this yeah. one might even take even longer, which makes me feel really nervous about this bullpen. But all of that, I, I, somebody also was talking about Otani. I said, listen, once you have the lead, all of that goes out the window, whether Otani hit well or not. The Angels were up three to two, I believe, once he left the game. Yeah. And once you have that lead, you hang on to that lead. You don't run Chase Silseth out there two innings in a row when he's clearly struggling and also dealing with some sort of like leg issue. You saw that he was really grumbling out there because it felt like he was very uncomfortable out there. And we like Chase Silseth and he's mm -hmm. been great out of the bullpen. But you just have to be able to identify when somebody doesn't have it. And I understand more wasn't in the bullpen and we had no idea. Fans didn't have any idea. Beat writers didn't have any idea. So you've got to get creative with your choices. I guess Silseth makes the most sense there, but then you bring him out again. And yeah. I just, uh, this again, to, to me, we, we are not nitpicky about Nevin. And I know people like to blame Nevin for every single thing that goes wrong. I feel like that we are pretty reasonable when we blame Nevin. Saturday was hundred percent on Nevin. I think it was absolutely insane the way that it went down, but yeah, considering this bullpen issue, are you happy with his decisions or what do you think of his decisions? And how do you feel now that Matt Moore is not going to be in there? Well, talking about Saturday, Sil Seth actually gave up the run in the first inning he was in, and then he mm -hmm. got back out there. So, so technically he made, he made kind of a mess of things in that. Mm -hmm. first inning. And then the second inning, when he came back out there, he actually got through it. And so that, that's why I don't think that this would technically be on Phil Nevin. And then we ended up tying the game. I, I just think that, but he was hurt. Like, clearly he was hurt. He was that's, all over the place. And, 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 that's, and that's my goal. point. That's my point is I just think that we're in a position where, you know, now, now Matt Moore's out and he's going to be out for a month or two. And, and that just causes all sorts of concern and all sorts of nerves. Right. Mm -hmm. And the fact that if we lose this one guy, suddenly we're all nervous and we're, we're scared and we're, we're anxious about this bullpen tells me that, there's a lot of work to be done there, right? Yeah. And so bringing in Ben Joyce, I love that. However, Ben Joyce, as Lindsey Crosby said on this show, and he said he tweeted it out when Ben Joyce was called up, hasn't pitched back-to-back -back days. Yeah. And this bullpen desperately needs guys who pitch back-to-back <laughs> -back days, right? Yeah. And so I, I like Ben Joyce a lot. I'm wondering if he was the right move because if you look at Double A right now, there's a few guys that are crushing it down there. Mm -hmm. and And I think that they're, 
probably could have been a better option. Yeah, you I, lost I, a lefty. Why not bring up another lefty? And, and that's the thing. Like, I, I, again, it goes back to what we said in the first segment. The two-inning mindset. Ben Joyce is not going to go two innings. He's, he's not going to do that. He's done or it he's, once this season. Uh, or he's not going to go back-to-back but... days, right? Yeah, and so exactly. there's enough guys in AAA and in AA that can, that can come up and fulfill that role. Again, it just feels like we're, we're pretending that this bullpen is this when it's actually that, right? So as we get to Sunday's game, it was another frustrating outing because Patrick Sandoval pitched very well. The Angels only lost two to nothing. Yeah. It's the first time they've been shut out all season, Mike. Can you believe it? Going back to last season, the Angels had not been shut out at all uh, for about, what was it, 90-something day or games or something crazy like that? Yeah, like, it was a high, really high number I don't have in front of me. A really high number I don't have it in front of me, but basically what really is important here is they hadn't been shut out all, all 2023. Yeah. Uh, and so this is the first time they were shut out, so they're swept by the Marlins. And you and I talked about this Marlins series a little bit last weekend, and I said, hey, you know what? Edward Cabrera, uh, he might be a challenge. I had him on my fantasy team. He hadn't really hit a stride this season. Then, of course, the minute I drop him in fantasy, he, he goes out and does this game. on Friday. <laughs> yeah, right. Or, or I should say Saturday. It was uh, Jesus Lazardo on Friday who I thought was going to be the challenge. But then, yeah, uh, Edward Cabrera does really well on Saturday. And then uh, Yuri uh, Perez does really well. The guy's tall. He's 20 years Six old. Six foot eight. I didn't realize yeah. he was that tall. Man, that guy is towering on the mound. Randy Johnson, right-handed. Yes, exactly. And... And so we just we ran into some really good pitching uh, against the Marlins, and, and and I think that the Angels had a bit of luck not facing some tougher pitching in Boston or with Boston yeah. when they came into town, and and so we really met our match this weekend, and it's going to happen. And mm-hmm. and and to be honest, like the Marlins have a very good young core developing. They got some veterans, but they have some really good young players on this team who are making up the future of the Marlins. So it is the first sweep that the angels have encountered this, this uh, year. I I'm hopeful that they can take two out of three from the white Sox. They still need two more games, I believe in order to keep that 15 win pace. I do. And the white Sox are struggling right now. In fact, uh, I think I, to be encouraged uh, for those of us who are discouraged, uh, our friend Stefan Muma has an update for us on Twitter. And it was uh, the, nine game chunks of this of the season that uh the angels have gone through so far so far uh if if you have they have played exactly six nine game sets so far so the first set of nine games they went five and four uh the second set they went four and five the third set they went five and four the fourth set they went six and three the fifth set they went three and six and the sixth set they went five and four so they're two games off from a 90 win pace. We're hoping that they can make up for that before the end of the month. So let's talk about Sunday's game because there were some, some more moments that were very frustrating, right? Yeah. And, and what was kind of the story of the weekend is the angels had opportunities to win John. And yeah. that's the thing I think that was probably most frustrating. I would say maybe Friday night, they didn't, but Saturday for sure. And then Sunday for sure. Even if it mm-hmm. was the last batter of the game, trout had two outs, with runners at second and third, Ren, uh, Renfro and and Neto are on the on the bag, and, mm-hmm. and Trout didn't come through. And I know that there's a narrative about how he's not clutch and all of those things, and there's numbers that say that he is, and there's numbers that say that Otani is. And anytime you say anything about these guys, people are like, I can't wait until Otani gets off the team because you're complaining about him. Listen, Yankee fans complain about Aaron Judge. Padre fans <laughs> complain about Juan Soto. I mean, th- th- these guys are great. We love having them on our team. But these are the moments that they have to come through. And, and Mike Trout has to come through in that moment. And, and I know that he didn't have a bad weekend, but this is, this is game on the line. This is what we need Trout to come through on. At least he didn't strike out, and that was, a, that was the good news. It was a little sure. flare into right field, but it just couldn't get past a rise at second base. But again, this team had opportunity to win, John. They had opportunity to score some runs, and they squandered those opportunities. And Sandoval... He actually pitched really well in this game. Six innings, eight hits, yeah. two runs, two Ks. I find it interesting that he's not striking out a bunch of guys this year compared to what yeah. he did last year. But it looks like he's a bit more consistent in the strike zone, and he's 
actually not laboring in games, which is good. I love that little behind the back catch that he made and then yes. he dove for the other catch. He played Brunch, really great yeah. defense. And and so I, I guess if we had to summarize this weekend, it was that the Angels just were not able to come through when they needed to come through. They could have won two out of three and and they weren't able to win two out of three. And unfortunately, those moments where they could have come through and they didn't cost them the game. It's fundamentals, Mike, uh, and they're they're not fun, and they are mental because the Angels right now are <laughs> yeah. just awful. Uh, Phil Nevin said after the game, it's not a good taste in our mouth, obviously, with the way the homestand was going. At the end of the day, we won more than we lost. Come on, Phil. But not, <laughs> not what we were setting out to do after what we'd accomplished. Yeah. We didn't play our best this weekend. That's no secret. Uh, they're 28 and 26, and they fall behind the Mariners in the standings. Yeah. Uh, Mike, there were so many moments where they just looked so uh, unaware of what should be happening on the field. A, a good example is you think about Mike Trout running from first to second, ball gets to Luisa Rise, he tags Trout, throws the first double play. Yeah. Right? Yep. Same thing happens again. On Sunday, on Sunday mm-hmm. I believe it was Drury running up the line. I think it was Drury and Renfro or something like that. Yeah, Drury at least, yes. I think it was Drury. And I think it was Patrick O'Neill who suggested, why don't they stop? Right. Why, like, draw, yeah. like, draw the tag or draw the throw. Yeah. Don't run into it. Don't let him tag you into a double play. And I, and I gave Patrick a round of applause because it right. was like, yes, of course, stop. So they have to chase you and yeah. you can at least get the guy – uh, from home plate to first two, and- two or three more seconds allows that to happen right either yeah. they have to actually throw to second base or try to chase you down and it gives that guy running to first more time mm-hmm. uh, th- that seems logical it's also when you have a ground ball to shortstop and you're at second base you stop and you wait so that mm-hmm. you don't get tagged but it seemed like the angels talk about fundamentals that's just that's just a fundamental play like that's that's just yeah. a baseball play and the fact that they're just chugging down to second base i don't understand what their thought is there I don't understand why they were even doing that. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. The play is right in front of you when the ball is hit to Luis Arise. And it's just a lack of situational awareness. It's just a lack of awareness all around. Mike, we say it all the time that these kind of mistakes are on Phil Nevin as the manager. And then you got to think about like the coaching staff. I know everybody said, Benji Gill, Benji Gill, Benji Gill is the the infield coach where all the mistakes are happening. So what do we do about that? I don't know. So I I really wish that these guys would just tighten it up because when they lose, it's not because for the most part, they're getting outplayed. I think Jesus Lazardo was fantastic on Friday. That was a, a worthy win from the Marlins. But then you think about these last two games on Saturday and Sunday, the angels beat themselves. Yep. Once again, they have to clean it up. And I, I said this two weeks ago, Mike. And then I think we said this last month, is this who this team is? Because they just keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Well, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Now, the Angels are going to turn the page, and as fans, we're going to turn the page too. Nothing we can do about that Marlins series. They're heading to Chicago today, and they're playing at 5-10 Pacific time. The White Sox are about 10 games under 500. they They've lost three in a row, and so hopefully the Angels can take advantage of that. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. We'd love to connect with you there. If you have any thoughts and you want to comment below the video on YouTube, please do so. We really appreciate the engagement. If you're listening on the audio side, come join us on YouTube and comment below. Be part of the conversation. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Let's talk about Ben Joyce and what kind of expectations we can actually have for him. I know we're expecting him to come in and just be incredibly dominant, but let's temper our expectations and talk about who this guy is and what he actually can do tomorrow on Locked On Angels. Maybe we'll even see him tonight in Chicago. Maybe he'll make his debut uh, on the mound there. That would be great to see. Well, we uh, will be around for that conversation tomorrow, so we hope that you'll join us. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. That's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Angels, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.